your matchup eight miles away a month ago and we're about ready to go in this one ron Gruber, bill covington and clarence armstrong are the officials tonight and we are ready for the tip of our sonic blockbuster matchup And Duke controls, and again, the five seniors, including a walk-on in Jackson Watkins, are starting for Carolina. As we bring you the starting lineups brought to you by Degree, first for Duke, the usual starting five, Jeremy Roach and four freshmen out there for the Blue Devils. And an early touch for Filipowski. And a travel is the call, and that was the walk-on. Jackson Watkins digging down on him, Jay, and helping out. Yeah, Watkins didn't go to double-team, but he dropped down and caused that travel. So Roy Williams always did this. Hubert Davis is doing it. How long will Watkins be in the game? Justin McCoy as well. Caleb Love and R.J. Davis obviously are coming in soon. A time-honored tradition here at Carolina. Leaky Black coming off an 18-point effort against Florida State Monday. Turns it over. Stolen away by Jeremy Roach. And he gets fouled on the drive. And that's what Carolina has to be concerned with, not just with this group, but overall. North Carolina has to have its offense help its defense. You cannot have turnovers and allow Duke to play ahead of your defense. That happened in the first game, 20-2 in fast break points in favor of Duke. And you see Caleb Love, R.J. Davis coming in and a warm ovation for Justin McCoy and Jackson Watkins as they sit down. So Hubert Davis in his second year as the head coach here in Chapel Hill. He got all five of the seniors in there to start and now he's got his starting five in there. Mark Mitchell, who's been playing extremely well lately, misses the runner. And Leaky Black with the rebound. He's going to have to rebound all game long. Ooh. And Derek Lively, the second, with an early statement here in the rematch after swatting away eight shots in game one. Well, Derek Lively, the second, he's so long and super athletic and excellent timing. Obviously, that was an off-the-ball uh, block. You give credit to Tyrese Proctor for stopping the ball and getting in the way of Leaky Black in the basket. Carolina's won three in a row. Duke has won five in a row coming into this game. Leaky Black baseline, and Filipowski knocked away this one. If Filipowski was there, so was Lively. Their rim protection is outstanding. Two seven-footers in the starting lineup for the Blue Devils in Filipowski and Lively. This is the freshman Tyrese Proctor. Filipowski on the drive. Knocked away, bothered by Baycott, and here come the heels. Good pass. And the flush for Armando Baker. Everybody in the lower deck here on their feet at the Dean Dome as Carolina strikes first. Filipowski misses a three. Carolina needs to look to run as often as possible and pass ahead. Look at that position by Baycott, but Filipowski with another block. Just the length and athleticism of Duke making those recoveries. Baycott had inside position and tried to go up quickly, but Filipowski just wiped it away. So the Blue Devils with three blocks in two minutes and 20 seconds. But Carolina can't get gut, you know, can't be shy. They still have to go to the basket. And a travel called on Filipowski at the other end. Just a beautiful play by North Carolina in transition. The little drag screen in the middle of the court and the roll to the basket. And just a spectacular pocket pass between the two defenders by R.J. Davis. And when Davis has the ball, I think North Carolina is a better team when he initiates offense. As he's doing right now, Caleb Love in the corner playing off the ball. Davis draws a crowd. Shot fake by Leaky Black, gets to the elbow and knocks it down. Well, you have to stay down on that shot fake. You recover a little bit late to Leaky Black. But you're not worried about that three-point shot. You're more worried about the drive. Take away the drive, recover late to the shot. 
Carolina fans will remember Monday night the shot picked by Leaky Black against Florida State got to the rim a huge dunk late kind of the dagger in that game and Filipowski just leaves the floor and once you do you get put in rotation and Leaky Black is an, a very good corner shooter that's really his spot other areas on the court you're not as concerned about him taking the three First year is the head coach of the Blue Devils program for John Shire, who won a national championship as a player on staff for many years as an assistant, told us before the game, the defense has led the way, but offensively he feels they're much more connected recently. They're still looking to score, though, in this one. And a turnover. Love is fouled. Tried to hammer it down. Instead, we'll be going to the line for two. Carolina is doing a very good job of impacting the ball. They're trying to get into Duke ball handlers. They got caught on a switch and then a terrific shooting of the gap by Caleb Love. Almost got that to go down, but you like how hard he took it. That's a very difficult pass out of the post. You make a diagonal pass out of the post, you are inviting the turnover and to let the defense take it the other way. So Love, who's had some very big games in his career against Duke, most notably, of course, in the Final Four a year ago, knocks down the first one, and it is 5-0 Carolina, 3-14 into the game. And Caleb Love getting to the free throw line is a very good indicator of his aggressiveness. You don't want to just be aggressive in taking jump shots, but being aggressive in getting into the paint, drawing help, and playing out of it. The foul on Duke was on Derek Whitehead. He's come in off the bench for Filipowski. Lively with the offensive board. Duke sixth in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage. And North Carolina has to be aware of where Derek Whitehead is because he is an excellent three-point shooter. You want to turn him into a driver. Mitchell, the lefty, into the paint over Nance and Duke on the board. That was pretty good defense by Pete Nance. You, know, you don't want to allow middle, but at the same time, he stayed between Mark Mitchell and the basket, didn't go for that shot fake, and made him make a tough two. Tipped away, recovered by Love. Black shut off on the baseline. Now Davis will try and stepped out of bounds to turn it over. Well, speaking of Pete Nance, he's going 94 feet with Jay Billis. Oreos, Pete Nance has been on fire. Before the cookies, he was just 9 points, 28% from three. But since the cookies, doubling that average, 18 points per game. I can tell you, I had never heard of lemon Oreo cookies, but the team on their recent trip to Florida State, there were 20 boxes in the lobby when they arrived. They shot a school record 14 threes. I'm not saying their success is because of the cookies, but I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> Well, Jay and I are Oreo snobs, Holly. We're we're in that we're in it for the real thing. But if it's working for the heels, go with it. Not superstitious, but why risk it? Right. You cannot go underneath the screen on Jeremy Roach because he's going to pull up and shoot it. You got to go over the top and force him inside the three-point line. But yeah, I don't want citrus with my Oreos. I'm thinking more chocolatey goodness. Roach averaging just over 13 a game, over 16 a game his last nine. He had 20 in the first game between these two. As Baycott, looking for a teammate, threw it out of bounds. Now, when Jeremy Roach has the ball on the offensive end, he gets a little screen here, and Caleb Love goes underneath it. You go underneath it, he's just going to pull up and take a rhythm three. You got to go over the top of that and stay into his body. And then Armando Baycock gets the ball on the other end, gets doubled in the post, and just threw it away. Roach was out several games with a toe injury. The freshman Tyrese Proctor inherited a lot of the ball handling duties as he knocks one down. And even with Roach coming back, either can handle, either can score. And John Shire very comfortable with the, the, the junior and the freshman in the backcourt. Well, Tyrese Proctor is just 18 years old. He should still be in high school. Came in from Australia, but he has changed this team in handling the ball. Baycott aggressively towards the bucket and draws the foul. Now how about this with these free throws North Carolina will already have shot more free throws in this game than they did the entire 40 minutes in Durham a little slice cut off the screen around the free throw line just a diagonal screen and I think that I think North Carolina is going to try to get Armando Baycott on the move more often against Eric Lively the second instead of just posting him up on the low block and having him go one on one in the post. 
Third point of the night for Baycott. He had just one Monday night in Tallahassee against the Seminoles. The Heels did win the game, but his only point was a free throw in the last minute of play. And that is a very unusual kind of night for a guy who's been one of the best big men in the country the last couple of years. Ryan Young into the ball game for Duke. He's an excellent rebounder. And you have to keep him off the offensive glass and stay down on all of his pivots and fakes. He's very productive in short minutes when he comes in for Duke. Sets the screen, frees up Roach, who misses the jumper. And the all-time leading rebounder for the Tar Heels, Baycott, is down with it. Baycott put pressure on the shot and then got there for the rebound. Baycott gets doubled and kicks it out. Double looks like it's coming off the dribble. Love with a contested three, and back comes Whitehead. Little weave action up top. Proctor using the screen into the paint. Floaters short, but a foul is called. Looks like they got Baycott and got him on the hand. That weave action up top. Some people call it false motion. It's really just to move the defense and especially move the help and perhaps get a switch before you get into something and attack. Coming up next, the top teams in the Pac-12 get after it. 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight, number eight, Arizona, number four, UCLA. The Bruins very much in a play for a one seed. It is an ESPN Sonic blockbuster, and you're looking at two of the most productive players in the country, Jay, and Azulis Tubelis and Jaime Jaquez Jr. Well, both of them National Player of the Year and first-team All-America candidates, and Jaime Jaquez in the last month averaging about 23 a game, and we were there for that first game at McHale out in Tucson and I've not seen a more physical contest yeah. all year long than that one I don't think either team got the 60 points but there were a lot of there were standing eight, there were like 60 standing eight counts in that game it was played very much at the pace UCLA would like that game to be played at we'll see about the rematch tonight at Pauley Davis the kick leaky black the three he knocked down three of them Vince Carter is in the house and he's loving that Duke trying to operate out of the middle of the floor. Less opportunity to help. Baycott the block. Young the offensive rebound. Filipowski for three. And runs it down. Now Roach open in the corner. And he'll bury it. Boy, the long offensive rebound. Those offensive rebounds are killers. Carolina's thinking about taking it the other way, and then all of a sudden they got to match up and play defense, and Jeremy Roach wide open in the corner. And now an official's timeout called, and Puff Johnson is injured. That's why we have the stoppage. Pete Nance will be coming back in as Johnson, in some difficulty, makes his way off the court. Boy, a young man who's just been injured so often, unfortunately, in his career. Hopefully this is nothing serious. Looks like he was holding that left hamstring not sure exactly what's going on we'll get a report on it but Puff Johnson's he can space the floor for North Carolina because he can hit a three-point shot the defense has to go with him and that will open up some things inside for Baycott Jacob Grandison into the game for Duke guarding Leaky Black now a touch for Baycott the double Black again for three. Tipped around, and a foul going against the heels. Looks like Baycott going after that offensive rebound. Filipowski went down. A delayed whistle, and Baycott not happy about it at all. It is Baycott. It is his first as we all get another look. Yeah, that's not a foul. That's just rebounding. They're both going after the ball. And Hubert Davis doesn't like it one bit. He does not want to have to make any tough decisions with his senior big man. Well, good job by Baycott to run the court, clear that area out. Nance couldn't quite finish it. The shot fake got all the way to the rim but couldn't flush it. And you give Baycott credit for that because he ran the floor 
and flattened out the defense, and that opened up that drive for Pete Nance. Roach misses this three. Nance the rebound. Eight minutes in, just 11-9 here. Duke by two. But Baycott, the last two possessions, has raced down the floor on offense. Love for three. Knocked around, and Roach has it for Duke. Caleb Love took that shot on the first side of the floor. North Carolina didn't move the defense at all. Filipowski guarded by Nance. And Nance called for the foul. His second. When North Carolina gets a piece of the paint, when they drive it and force help, they can play out of it. They got the ball to Leaky Black on the left side of the floor. He's able to knock down that three. And this long rebound, when Duke gets it, Filipowski does a nice job of attacking the paint, drawing the help, and then Jeremy Roach wide open in the corner. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Fifth year senior Leaky Black among those going through senior night here in Chapel Hill. Armando Baycott as well. Leaky had a blue jersey from last year, a white one from this year. He's been here a while, Holly. That's right. In fact, he has set an all time UNC record tonight with the number of games played. And you know, his name is but his real name is Rashawn Malik Black, and I asked him about breaking that record tonight, and he said, this place has changed my life so much. It means the world to me that I will leave here with my name on something. He said, I want to be rem remembered as a guy who really fought through things. A bad ankle his freshman year, playing through it his sophomore year. He said, I've gone through a lot of adversity, but I've never quit on this place, and now his name will be etched forever here at North Carolina, a place that he says changed his life forever. A guy who's been a great teammate, a great defensive player, uh, beloved in the program. And it felt to me, Jay, like when they were announcing the, the five seniors, that Leaky Black got every bit the ovation that Armando Baycott did. And that's saying something because it was loud as heck for Baycott. Well, he's one of the best defenders in the country and has been for quite some time. Well, Duke is doing a good job of, they are impacting the ball right now, and especially off of screens. They're showing and recovering. DeMarco Dunn in off the bench, a little strong on the three. Pete Nance has two fouls. Puff Johnson has left with an injury. DeMarco Dunn and Dontrez Stiles are both in off the bench right now, and you can see Johnson grimacing in the hallway as he tries to work through whatever it is. Carolina kind of hit and miss game to game what they get out of their bench at the best of times They've only gotten 27 points off the bench total in their last five games Shot clocks at two does Rhodes know it Got it off in time, but didn't hit it here come the heels Davis and a much needed bucket for Carolina R.J. Davis is the Tar Heel that needs to get going in this game. He had 16 points and 10 rebounds in that game against Virginia. And he's a guy with a good mid-range game, can knock down threes. He's got to really get going offensively. Filipowski trying to back down Leaky Black and using the size to his advantage, scores over him. And using his strength. You know, Filipowski is only 5 of 18 in his last two games, 0 of 5 from 3. But when he's got a size advantage, he needs to take advantage of it and take Leaky Black down into the post. Good crossover. Davis soft off the window and good. Well, you really have to force him into that screen. He turned that down with ease with a great crossover and got all the way to the rim. Mitchell for three, and he'll hit it. He doesn't take a ton of them, but a Mark Mitchell shooting a, a very respectable 38% from three on the season. Now that actually percentage-wise leads the Duke, uh, the Duke team. That's just his 18th three on the season, but he's hit some big ones. That one against Notre Dame in the corner was huge. 
Been playing some very good basketball recently for the Blue Devils. Dunn shot off on the baseline. Carolina's got to move the ball a little bit more. There's a little bit too much dribbling in one side of the floor. Not this time for Davis and the rebound to Filipowski. And when you take long shots, that doesn't give Armando Baycott as good of an opportunity to get a rebound. Baycott got all of that. Well, he timed that beautifully. And runs the floor. And finishes. And the Hall of Famer Roy Williams on his feet for that. Baycott is playing in a different gear, changing ends. That's three or four times he's beaten his matchup down the floor. And that was after blocking a shot under the basket. Can't really have a better sequence than that, can you? Filipowski throws it away, the fourth turnover committed by Duke. Three subs coming in for John Shire's Blue Devils right now. But your point is well taken about Baycott. His, his motor's really running in this game, isn't it? Duke is able to substitute more often than North Carolina. And you wonder toward the end of the game, is that a little, that extra, extra rest, extra freshness going to be a factor? Now you wonder, can Baycott ever come out of the game? He hasn't yet tonight. And he's headed back to the free throw line. Again, a great effort. Well, Baycott moved lively first and then made that baseline spin to get an angle. But Armando Baycott has been active. A great block. And then he immediately runs down the floor the other end, beats Filipowski down and muscles his way to an easy basket. Had to work hard to get something easy. Eastern with Women's College Game Day uh, coming to you on ESPN 2 at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. It'll be the ACC championship between Virginia Tech and Louisville, and then it'll be the SEC championship at 3 o'clock Eastern again on ESPN. Holly Rowe will be there in Greenville, South Carolina. College Game Day covered by State Farm starts the day noon Eastern on ESPN 2. John Shire pleading his case with the Bill Covington, Armando Baycott to the line. What a career! He has had the all-time leader in Carolina in both rebounds and double-doubles. Yet, due to the current set of criteria, Mr. Billis, that Carolina has, as much as Armando Baycott has done, he has not satisfied any of the criteria to get his name up there in the rafters. ACC Player of the Year, first or second team All-American, most outstanding player of the Final Four or the team's most valuable player should they win the national championship. Should they tweak the criteria if need be to get him up there? Well, he'll be first or second team All-America this year. So he'll satisfy it. But if he doesn't, they got to figure out a yeah. new criteria. I don't know how you can be the all-time leading rebounder and not have your name up there. Alondis Williams of Wake won ACC Player of the Year last year as Proctor knocks one down. And Baycott, as remarkable as he was last year, and he was, was not a first or second team All-American. He was named today as one of the 15 finalists for the Wooden Award. If he makes it to the next round, the last 10, by definition, then he'll be a first or second team All-American, and assuredly his name and number would go up in the rafters. I think Baycott's going to take Young on one-on-one, -on -one, see if they double. Good pass out. Dunn misses the three, and Whitehead now with a rebound for Duke. And Duke's going to double. Armando Baycott, somebody's got to knock a shot down or make a play. Well, Duke's taking the risk because they're not as concerned about a three being hit if he passes out. Young with a offensive rebound. You talked about how skilled he is, really, at carving out position on the offensive glass. Well, he's got 16 rebounds in his last 40 minutes in the last few games. He's just productive when he's on the floor. He will wedge you out. That's what he did on that play. Brad transfer from Northwestern, and John Shire says, Young cannot wait to get to the NCAA tournament. Joe Lenardi's got Duke as a six seed right now. Well, you just kept Filipowski went for that shot fake again by Leaky Black, and you cannot leave the floor. You just put late pressure on the shot. Now watch Leaky Black in the corner. After that little ball screen, just gives a little shot fake, and when he puts that right foot back, you know he's going to drive. 
I mean, you're not going to shoot when you put your right foot back. Rattles home the first. And it feels like maybe opponents, JR, giving that shot a little bit more respect. And Leakey has been streaky this year from three, but he's been shooting it pretty well lately. But he has been getting guys to bite. Well, you, you don't want to dare Leakey Black to shoot the ball. You, you don't want to leave him open. He can make those shots. But it, you have to just recover late and put pressure on him. But where he can really hurt you, shot fake and drive because he's going to draw help and then he's a good passer out of it. Buff Johnson leaving the game with an injury. Holly's got an update. Guys, he injured his right ankle. He is not sure. They're not sure if he can return yet or not. They've had him in that back hallway with athletic trainer Doug Halverson kind of running it out to see if he can return. I did notice he left the court yesterday at practice all, all as well, and I am told it is the same injury, so he's going to have to see if he can fight through that. All right, Holly, thank you. And again, Pete Nance with a couple of fouls. He's on the bench. That's why Dontre Styles is in the game, and Tyler Nickel, a freshman from Harrisonburg, Virginia, getting ready to check in. Wide open, Leaky Black. Rebound Filipowski. When Carolina reverses the ball and then attacks, that's when they're at their best offensively. Mitchell aggressive offensively, and he's rewarded with a trip to the line. We talked about the, the bench situation for Hubert Davis. Sometimes you know, Styles gets a lot of minutes, then he doesn't play the next game. Dunn doesn't play, then he gets some minutes. And it's amazing. It's March, Jay, but Hubert Davis still kind of searching game to game who he can go to off the bench for production. There hasn't been consistency with what Hubert Davis is getting off the bench. So it is going to get game to game, depending on what he feels like he can get out of particular players and with particular matchups. I'll tell you, this guy at the free throw line, Mark Mitchell, He's been really good, especially the last three games. He's shooting 63%, 90% from the line, and averaging about 14 points per game over that stretch. A really good defender. Caleb Love misses the bank attempt, and the back comes Proctor. Whitehead dribbled it off his foot. Three on two. Love. It goes. Boy, what a catch by Leaky Black. That was a gutsy pass by R.J. Davis, one of the few transition opportunities against Duke in the two games. But that pass was behind him. Watch where this pass goes. Gutsy pass, but it was behind him. He still caught it and was able to finish on the other side of the rim. Just a superior play by Leaky, or by, excuse me, by Caleb Love, and kept his eyes on the rim the whole time. The foul on Ryan Young, his second. He has gone to the bench. Love at the line. So you got Caleb Love with green shoes. Pete Nance with lemon Oreos. <laughs> we got a lot of citrus looking yeah. stuff working for the heels. You saw Baycott on the bench, maybe just until the under four timeout. Big numbers for Caleb Love in his career against the Blue Devils. They need every ounce of energy they can get out of Armando Baycott tonight. The freshman Jalen Washington is in, in the middle right now for the heels with a Baycott on the bench. And Filipowski goes right at him. It bounces to Whitehead. And that's going to count and a foul. Washington wasn't square as a defender. But Filipowski just went right after Jalen Washington, went over the top of him, kept it alive. And again, the offensive rebound. And Whitehead able to get it to go. Boy, when your initial first shot defense is that good, and you have got to get the rebound to finish that defensive possession. Filipowski just went right over the top of Jalen Washington. The fifth offensive rebound of the night for Duke to just one for Carolina. Duke going to go underneath every screen on Seth, Seth Trimble. He's only made one three on the year, but a good driver. Three freshmen in the game for the Heels now, including Trimble. And he kind of telegraphed that one, and Mitchell picked it off. It's a little bit too much probing and too much dribbling. And when you don't have it, pass it out, reverse it, and then you can attack. Filipowski spins and lays it in. What a move. You can't give him that much space. You know, Jalen Washington 
backed off him and gave him a two or three feet. And then Filipowski just took up that space and then spun off his body. Again, another big time game coming your way later on tonight from Poly Pavilion, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, Arizona and UCLA. Duke trying to go to Kyle Filipowski with this last North Carolina lineup. Let him go against Jalen Washington. Just took the space up, spun off it, and got it to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by under $2 and $3 craves for a limited time only. Sign. Well, this morning on College Game Day, Javon Comer, congratulations, won $19,000, sinking the half-court shot. First time anybody has sunk it all season. Holly Rose with a couple of guys who witnessed it firsthand. That's right. Well, I want to go with Coach Greenberg first for the state, uh, for the Jeep halftime report. Coach, you want to talk about Duke's aggressiveness. Yeah, Duke's done a good job of extending possessions by getting to the offensive glass, and then when they get that offensive rebound, they're attacking, playing downhill, and getting to the rim. All right, we're both frustrated because the post passing is not quick yes. enough to Armando Baycott. How do they Armando improve? Armando Baycott is running his tail off and he's open early. They've got to get him the basketball early because he's better on the move, especially against Derek Lively's length. You sound like a frustrated big guy. I'm a frustrated big guy right now, Seth. <laughs> feed the big man and not cookies. Just feed him the basketball. <laughs> Holly, thanks, guys. Looking forward to that. Reese Davis and Seth and Fonz with the Jeep halftime report. Coming up 349 from now, you saw Armando Baycott is back into the game. He sat for a minute and 14 seconds. And again, Carolina needs everything they can get out of him tonight to have a chance to win this game. And I'll ask you the captain obvious question. How big is this game for Carolina? I think it's must win. Uh, North Carolina needs to win this game to get into the at-large conversation and feel like they're on the right side of the bubble heading into the ACC tournament. Otherwise, the heels have to do something extraordinary. And right now, Tyler Nichols still in the ball game, and the reason is because he can shoot it. You know, if Baycock gets doubled, he can kick it out, and Nichols can knock down a three. Roach to the free throw line, the kick to Filipowski. Big time battle with Baycock, and it's an and one opportunity as Baycock picks up his second foul. But Filipowski getting some one on one opportunities down on the block. He took Baycock down on the block. It looked like an initial drive. But nice little pivot and then a shot fake and Baycott's arms were down a little bit so that contact is going to be called a foul nine times out of ten. Filipowski having a big night. He is the eight time ACC rookie of the week this year and with Baycott picking up his second he goes to the bench in all likelihood for the last 326 of the half and Pete Nance who's got two fouls himself back in. Hard to believe, and John Shires talked about this a couple of times at a preseason practice. He didn't like the effort from Filipowski, and Filipowski was asked to leave practice. It's hard to believe that guy is this guy because, boy, he can really fight through a lot of stuff on the court. He is a talented seven foot freshman. Carolina going to flex action off an initial ball screen. And this is not an offensive rebound lineup that they have in the ball game. Black tries to follow up his own miss, but Filipowski down with a rebound. Aside from a team offensive rebound, I don't think Carolina's got a straight up offensive rebound in the first half. Boy, it feels like a huge 250 here for Carolina with a Baycott on the bench, and they're already down six. Roach got a switch. Step back three. Rebound Davis. And Carolina has to take any opportunity to run. Davis trying, and he buries it. You're going to get something better in transition than grinding it out in the half court against Duke's half court defense because of their length and the fact they protect gaps so well. Fast break points, 9-0 Carolina, but they're still down by four. Mitchell passed up the three. Well, he got taken out by a screen by Filipowski, and that opened up the offensive glass. Boy, what a battle Filipowski is having with a couple of heels, and he emerges with the ball. And Nance really fought him inside, got a piece of that ball, and Pete Nance has been much more active defensively over the last few ball games. Filipowski 9-8 and eight already in this game. Got a switch, Proctor being guarded by Tyler Nickel. He settled for that. 
Davis pushing again. And it's fouled. R.J. Davis is so good in transition. Not only a good passer, but he's got the ability to hit this short little jumper. His middle game is excellent. He can knock down threes, and he's made over 50 of them on the season. But his middle game really makes him a weapon. And I think North Carolina is better when he's the primary ball handler to initiate offense. Foul on Whitehead, his second. He'll come out, a little pacing from Hubert Davis, who has talked about what last year's team accomplished and maybe the weight of expectations for this year's team, Jay, based on what last year's team did. And he wants this team just to be able to accomplish whatever it can and feel good about that. And Hubert is a, an endlessly positive, upbeat person, as you know, but he's still got some very high hopes for this team going forward. Well, North Carolina has ability. It is not a great perimeter shooting team, but they can make shots and they can play better than they have throughout the course of the season. And now is the time to do it. And they played well the last couple of minutes without Baycott on the bench with two fouls. A low cross screen for the screener. Carolina guarded it well. Roach turns the corner. And the call is going against him. He just put that arm out as that right arm and just put it out to discard the defender. North Carolina playing drop coverage. That means Pete Nance is playing. He's not up with the screener, Ryan Young, to hedge. And that way you take away the three and make it a like a floater or a mid-range shot. And you make it more of a tough two. Justin McCoy, the transfer from Virginia, he went through the senior night festivities, is back in. Puff Johnson is back on the bench. Hubert Davis has used 12 players in this game. Between injuries and some foul trouble. Love spins, elevates, and it won't stay down for him. Caleb Love. Got a one for five. Looks like they got a foul on Pete Nance. And that's number three, Jay. Caleb Love with a little spin move here and it's not too difficult to shot. But Nance going after the ball, knocking Proctor down. Now Proctor goes to the free throw line. It's not so much the foul as the fact it's the third foul that's so damaging for North Carolina. And Hubert Davis not happy at all. So Nance sitting, Baycott sitting. And McCoy, Styles, and Black. The three bigger guys out there right now for Carolina. This is not an alignment we have seen the heels use very often at all, if ever. I'm not sure there's been a more important player in Duke's resurgence this season than Tyrese Proctor. Coming in to handle the point guard duties, he is an excellent defender. And very good on the ball. And he's a good off-ball defender as well. But that's really allowed Jeremy Roach to become more of a scorer and not think about ball handling duties. John Shire told us pregame that Proctor asks for the toughest assignment for the best offensive player that the other team has on the perimeter. Yeah, he doesn't always get it because Mark Mitchell's an excellent defender. So is Jeremy Roach. But it's nice when they ask. I never ask. <laughs> like, put me on the worst guy. <laughs> What a matchup coming your way. The NBA Saturday primetime game tonight on ABC and the ESPN app. Joel Embiid and the Sixers. Giannis of the Bucks, who have won 16 in a row. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Look at that list of names that have come out of this program and have gone on to the NBA. And I got a chance in person living in Toronto to watch that guy for a number of years there. You can count on one hand guys who are more exciting than Vince Carter. Larry Brown, who played here, was an assistant coach here in the house as well. IWCC, he's wearing that. That's either Indian Wells Country Club or Iowa Western Community College. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> I think you could make an educator. And why, why was his son wearing a Garrison Brooks jersey? Yeah, that is odd. Grandison Bates. Oh, block. Styles smothered it. That is a huge play. They can hold for one. 
And North Carolina has the arrow to start the second half. So that's stop. And if Carolina gets a score here and the ball to start the second half, that's a big play to make that block. Good job coming off the postman and Styles wipes it away. And now North Carolina with a chance to score before they go into halftime. Huge play defensively. So Duke and Carolina meeting for the 260th time. Carolina ball with 10.8 seconds to go. Baycott back in for this offensive possession to end the first half. And Baycott has to be smart here. You don't want to get a charge and you don't want to get any kind of over the back foul going for an offensive rebound. Into the backcourt for Davis. Refuses the screen, gets inside. The follow will not go, but now it off the rim. Count. That's going to count. That'll be a goaltending call on Filipowski. The ball on the rim. Now, Hubert Davis has to sub out Armando Baycott here. But Baycott, because Ryan Young came over to block the shot, that opened up the offensive glass. He never misses those and missed them both. But Filipowski took it right off the rim for basket interference and a goaltend. Yeah, definitely the right call. Count the bucket. First half comes to a close. Kyle Filipowski, other than that last play, had a whale of a first half. Nine points and nine rebounds. But Carolina, despite an injury to Puff Johnson and foul trouble for Nance and Baycott, they are right there in a game that they, you would assume, just as a matter of personal opinion, Joe Lenardi's got him as one of the first four out right now. The heels with the first possession of the second half, down by two. And Baycott... In all likelihood, it's going to get a slice cut. There it is. And then a wide pin, well guarded by Jeremy Roach to keep R.J. Davis from taking that handoff. Nance open in the corner, misses the three. Weak side rebound, Leaky Black. Throws it out of bounds to retain possession. A moment ago, Holly Rowe visited with Hubert Davis. Well, Coach Davis, your team really battled, but what was your biggest concern going into the locker room? Well, just allowing them second chance opportunities. They got seven offensive rebounds for 10 points, and, you know, they're the number one offensive rebounding team in our conference. They do a, a great job of getting deflections and keeping the ball alive. That's a major emphasis for us in the second half. We've got to limit them to one shot every possession because when we do that, then we get out in transition. We had nine points in transition. That's what we've been good at all year. The hope is we'll be great at it in the second half. You must have done TV because my second question was transition, but you already answered it. So thank exactly you. Exactly what you were going to ask. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Coach. All right, good to see you. <laughs> Hubert Davis a step ahead. Proctor has it knocked away. The heels with a chance to get in transition. Davis. Boy, and two pretty good opportunities, Jay, here in the first minute of the second half that won't go down for Carolina. Uh, Leaky Black grabbed an offensive rebound. But the presence of Derek Lively, the second, made it a lot more difficult. And North Carolina, when they push the ball up the court, they're going to get something better quickly than they can get after grinding it out. Good help by Mark Mitchell to take away that roll by Baycott. Nance with an air ball on the three. He was just one for ten in the first game against Duke. Has not been a factor here tonight. Had been playing extremely well coming into this one. 16 points per game his last three. And he can't let that affect him. Now Pete Nance is going to have some open opportunities with all the attention going to Baycott. And he's got to be quick to shoot it. Proctor turns the corner. And Baycott playing way off of Derek Lively. A one-man zone. He's playing drop coverage on every ball screen. Roach floats it up and in, and Duke leads by four. Roach now with eight. Roach really good with that middle game. He's got a good floater. That was just a pull-up jump shot with a little hesitation. Good pass. Baycott will head to the line. That's number three on Derek Lively, the second. But he got a great angle. Watch the angle that Armando Baycott gets here. Just got right into the chest of Derek Lively the second and held him off on the high side. And that was a beautiful pass leading him right into his move. R.J. Davis delivered an absolute gem of a pass. Well, it seems like every game in which Armando Baycott plays, he passes somebody for something on a North Carolina all-time list. If he knocks down this free throw, he passes Michael Jordan.
for 14th on North Carolina's all-time scoring list. Should have stayed four years, MJ. <laughs> you would have put it away. That's right. Fourteenth on the Carolina scoring list, first on the all-time rebound list. Proctor is fouled by Davis on a three-point attempt. R.J. Davis went under the screen, and just like Jeremy Roach in the first half, Proctor just stepped back and pulled the trigger. And Davis, trying to recover, just went right into him as he, as he was trying to come down. Didn't mean to, but did create some contact before Proctor came back down to the court. Now the 18-year-old from Sydney, Australia, at the line for three. And Tyrese Proctor is a good shooter. Well, he shoots close to 90% from the free throw line. He's only shooting 30% from three on the season, but he has been trending upward. These are John Shire's parents. They were just about every game that he yeah. played as a player. They get better seats now that he's the head coach. <laughs> Shire from Chicago, his parents still living there, and they, as you say, they had uh, traveled well to follow him as a player and now as the head coach in his first year, taking over for Mike Krzyzewski. Went to, John Shire went to the same high school as Chris Collins. There's quite a fight between those two as to who was the best player all time there. The double on Baycott. Nance finds Black. Black misses the three, and it's Duke ball. You can't ask for a more wide open shot. That was an excellent pass out and second pass. Carolina, the worst three point shooting team in conference play in the ACC. Now they made 14 of them Monday night at Florida State, but they are only two for 12 so far here tonight. But it's a question right now of who's shooting them. Baycott takes a bump That's from four. Lively. And that'll be number four on Derek Lively the second. Derek Lively thought that Baycott was going to go for a little dribble handoff, but Baycott with the left hand kept it. That was a keeper play. Dribble handoff, no, I'm keeping it. And got an angle and got that body contact and goes to the free throw line. And North Carolina doing a much better job in this game than they did at Cameron Indoor Stadium on February 4th. They are living at the line in this game. Only shot three free throws in that first contest. And Duke now loses its best shot blocking presence for a while. Lively out, Ryan Young in. I think for North Carolina now, going into Baycott in the low post and going against Ryan Young, make Duke double and then play out of it. But you've got to play through Armando Baycott right now. And Baycott making him count at the line, isn't he? He is now seven for eight from the line tonight. And again, it's a two-point game. Proctor around and out. Carolina ball. Nance into Baycott. Lost it. And Roach will set it up. When Baycott catches the ball in the middle of the lane, it's a lot tougher to double him. Proctor looks off the help defender. Oh, follows up his own miss. What a beautiful tip in right over the top of R.J. Davis with the left hand by Tyrese Proctor. You know, he's 6'5 and long arm. He's got a team high 11, Duke by four. Baycott down to the court. It'll be Duke ball. Young's going to help him up. Baycott's okay. Tried to go into the body of Mark Mitchell. But watch this excellent second effort. A good fake to get off the floater and then really quick to the ball for that left-handed tip in by Tyrese Proctor. When he let it go, I think he knew that he had missed it. And nobody got a body on him. Again, he reclassified. Could still be a high school senior. Boy, has he got a bright future. Filipowski. Leaky Black got a piece of that. Filipowski got it back. And oh. slams it home. What a tough finish by Kyle Filipowski. Great initial block by Leaky Black. 
But Filipowski with the great second effort. Yeah, he has played like a man possessed tonight, hasn't he? Now 11 and 10 on the night. So consistent with his productivity. As a freshman, the double doubles. Love is fouled and will be at the line when we come back. Kyle Filipowski has been everything Duke could hold here tonight. Well, this is his 27th game in double figure scoring. Got the ball blocked, but stuck with it. And this is a powerful finish in traffic by Kyle Filipowski. My name is Ron. This exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Sonic Steak and Bacon Grilled Cheese for a limited time only. Mm, Sonic. What a night for Kyle Filipowski. Duke leading Carolina by six here in Chapel Hill. Duke comes into this game, Holly, having won five in a row. Over to you. There's a reason for that. After they beat North Carolina in February, they were feeling pretty good about themselves. The very next game, they went to Miami and got run out of the gym. John Shire said after that game, it was the turning point of their season because the players got together and had a 90-minute players-only meeting where they got back on the same page. The next game was a loss, but since then, they haven't looked back winning five in a row. He said that was the turning point of our season. They decided they wanted to be good. They thought they'd arrived after that North Carolina win, and they realized they hadn't. They got back to doing good things, and their defense has turned up. They've been a top-10 defense in their last five wins, and that has been the turning point. And Shire credited Jeremy Roach and two grad transfers, Young and Grandison, so the older players on this team, for kind of taking charge and leading the way in that meeting. They are only three and six this year in true road games, all of them in ACC play. A battle for the rebound again, and this time Nance and the Heels come out with it. Love for three. And Carolina now two for 13 from beyond the arc. And they've had some good looks. But North Carolina, their offense has put a ton of pressure on their defense. And their defense has performed admirably, but North Carolina cannot get a shot to go down from the perimeter. The Lepowski open. Nance a good seal on to Mitchell. Davis down with a rebound. And I think they've got to look to Baycott. But it's taken away, a turnover. That pass went to the wrong hand. You had to throw it to the other hand. Mitchell on the assist from Proctor, a transition bucket for the Blue Devils, who now have their largest lead of the night. Pete Nance made a pass into Armando Baycott, but he threw it to his right hand and threw it to right where the defense was. You throw it to the left hand, he's got a bucket. Love up and in, a tough one for Caleb Love. Boy, how much better is Caleb Love when he's attacking the basket? And now Ryan Young has lost a contact. Now watch this pass by Pete Nance and watch where the defense is on Armando Baycott. If the pass is thrown to the other hand, that's a basket. And uh, you give Ryan Young credit for getting to that side and then that led to an easy basket on the other end, that turnover. And Caleb Love goes right into the chest of Ryan Young. He wanted an and one, didn't get it. Meanwhile, the first sub of the second half for Hubert Davis is Puff Johnson returning to the game. Left in the first half with an ankle injury, but he's back in now as Caleb Love is whistled for a foul. His second. It's a little too physical off that Iverson cut. Off the elbows by Jeremy Roach. But Carolina's got to continue to look inside to Baycott and continue to put the ball in the deck and get in the paint. That's the way you're going to draw help and get open shots. Otherwise, you're taking challenge jumpers. Roach off the ball, now gets it from Proctor. Proctor comes to get it again, pulls up. Too strong, and Baycott is seventh rebound of the night. What a good job by Mark. Mitchell to get back and corral the ball. Love no, tip no, Puff Johnson no, Baycott yes!
Now that looked like North Carolina offensive rebounding. It wasn't just Armando Baycott. Puff Johnson getting his nose dirty and getting to the offensive glass. And they are on their feet at the Smith Center in this all-important game for the Tar Heels here on senior night. Proctor behind the back. Step back. Way short. Carolina took away the initial action. And it was a one-on-one -on -one play by Proctor. Davis. This game is tied. Timeout, Duke. It can't just be Armando Baycott on the offensive glass. He gets inside position, keeps it alive, but Puck Johnson gets in there and keeps that alive again. And then a great pass from Caleb Love leads R.J. Davis to just the third three for North Carolina as they tie it up at 43. Are you ready for this? Suffering from sinus congestion? Yes. Joe lenardi has got both of them. As two seeds, UCLA certainly feeling like they have a chance to move up. Alabama, Kansas, Baylor all lost today. You feel, and I agree with you, Alabama, Kansas, that does not hurt their candidacy for a one seed. No, they're still one seed. So the one that UCLA can get is if Purdue drops off that one line where they'd lose early in the Big Ten tournament. The heels on a 7-0 run to tie it at 43. Their last lead was at 9 to 8. Love is fouled, aggressive again, and rewarded for it again, as he will be at the free throw line when we come back. What a good one. It always is. Carolina and Duke all tied up. Duke and Carolina tied at 43 as we welcome you back here to Chapel Hill and take a look at our game time moment brought to you by Guinness. Duke, a very good offensive rebounding team this season and very effective in that regard tonight. Carolina, as Jay talked about right off the top of the show, getting to the line way more than they got to the line in the first game at Cameron a month ago. And Carolina getting out in transition some, but you know Hubert Davis would like to see even more of it. Armando Baycott, 15 points, 10 rebounds, four of them on the offensive end, and he has blocked three shots. But for North Carolina, the challenge in the half court is to continue to run offense with pace. In the first half, there were times when Carolina was dribbling too much. When the heels move the ball, they are really difficult to guard. Love with the ball, Davis off the ball on this trip. Davis being guarded by Jeremy Roach. Baycott guarded by Young, trying to back him down. Love puts it up with the shot clock running out. And Young down with a rebound for the Blue Devils. Well, that was a big rebound because Puff Johnson was unimpeded to get that, but... Ryan Young just grabbed that with both hands and snatched it away from him. And John Shire looking for big minutes out of Young with Derek Lively the second saddled with four fouls. A little low cross screen for Filipowski, but Black forced him further out to catch the ball about six, seven feet off the lane. And then evidently had two hands on him, and that's a, a foul on Leaky Black, his first. And we just saw a shot of Derek Lively the second with those four fouls. And that means North Carolina's got to attack the basket. It's not that Duke's not formidable still defensively, but they don't have that shot block weapon to wipe anything away. Whitehead. Little crossover, and Baycott still got him. His fourth block of the night. Put a little Euro step on Armando Baycott, but he must speak multiple languages because he wiped that away. And another miss three for Love and another rebound for Young. Not sure that was the shot. I say go inside to Baycott or attack the paint off the dribble. 
And it's been a while for Duke. They've made just one of their last eight field goal attempts. Roach has it knocked away. And another block by Baycott. And a reach-in foul on Whitehead. With Baycott playing in that drop coverage, when he's not up on ball screens but playing in the middle of the lane, yeah, he's been so good at challenging shots, but that means Duke is taking, instead of taking an open three or getting a roll to the basket and something easier, they're taking those little mid-range floaters, and those are tough twos. And Carolina's been very successful in protecting the paint, especially in the second half. And how about this? The second Blue Devil already to pick up his fourth foul. Both Lively and Whitehead on the bench with four as Proctor comes back in. And here comes the, the slice cut. And Ryan Young is just mucking that up. Baycott. Leaky Black cutting gives it back to Baycott. And Filipowski steals it. They had Baycott trapped and he couldn't find anybody. It's a lot of big bodies muddying things up underneath Filipowski and Young. Young with his phys physicality and Filipowski with his size. Now Filipowski driving on Leaky Black, leans in and finishes. Just a strong move against an excellent defender. But Leaky Black made him take a tough one right over him. Filipowski having a very big night here for the Blue Devils. Now 13 and 11. Leaky Black for three. Puff Johnson another offensive rebound. And a foul away from the ball going against Duke. Puff Johnson's activity has been impressive in this game. Kyle Filipowski going one on one, no double going against Leaky Black. And that was just a strong, tough move by the freshman. Well, Jeremy Roach has done a good job on R.J. Davis. He's sticking with him. Got a switch now. He's on love. Davis open, step back, got it! Well, just that switch when there was a ball screen. R.J. Davis, when he got the switch, attacked Tyrese Proctor. He's got 15, and Carolina's got its first lead since early in the game. But it rattles out on Young. Boy, everything but the finish there as he looked to put Duke back on top. Well, that was like playing against your dad in the driveway. He just backed him down. Nance for three! His first points of the night. Carolina's early offense is much more effective than when they have to grind it out. Mitchell, a strong drive and finish, looking for a foul. Duke back within two as John Shire calls timeout. North Carolina's defense has been solid and much better rebounding. And R.J. Davis, when he got the switch, attacked it. And a great throwback against the pick and pop. And Pete Nance, Oreos for everybody. Lemon, please. Week is upon us. We can't wait to get to Greensboro for the 70th annual New York Life ACC tournament. It all gets started Tuesday afternoon at the Coliseum, and we will have all three first round games for you at 2, 4 30, and 7 o'clock Eastern on ACC Network and the ESPN app. What's at stake? With Miami beating Pitt. Here's what's going on Miami and Virginia are co champs. Miami the one seed, Virginia the two. Duke with a win tonight gets a double bye. They would finish somewhere in the top four. Carolina's locked into the six or the seven, but much bigger picture and much more importantly for the Heels, they need a quality win tonight, and this would certainly count as that if they can pull it off. Davis to a wide open leaky black. Rebound lively back in there now with four fouls. Right, Duke is sticking with Caleb Love and R.J. Davis, and they're saying, hey, Leaky Black, if you can make shots, make them. Baycott getting what is surely a brief breather on the bench right now for Carolina. Lively back into the ball game with those four fouls. Proctor to Lively, and it's all tied. Just set a little slot ball screen, and Lively could roll all the way to the basket. It was in the middle of the floor, and nobody picked him up on the roll. 
Love takes the handoff. Somehow finds Black with the pass. And Leakey lays it in to put Carolina back on top. Boy, smart decision by Leakey Black. He could have taken another three there. Instead, he put it on the deck to get all the way to the rim. Duke looking to attack in the middle of the floor. Try to eliminate help. Proctor with 10 to shoot. Filipowski for three. Wow. Got it. Boy, he can go down to the post. That was a pick and pop. Set the little screen and then popped right to the three-point line on the left side and made Leaky Black recover. Just 28% from three on the season, but stepped into that one with a lot of confidence. Love creates a little space in the soft touch. Puts the heels back on top. And that is not an easy shot. Little horn set into a slot ball screen. Proctor gets it to go. Boy, how poised is this 18-year-old? Well, he doesn't just blast off that ball screen. He plays it with pace. And got his defender on his hip with his size, able to score over the top. But you're so worried about that roll with Derek Lively that he can just throw it up. And Pete Nance had to honor Proctor with the ball. Baycott at the scorer's table, but a long stretch without a whistle. So Carolina going without him for a couple of minutes here. Davis. Filipowski the rebound. Roach probably got away with a foul there that wasn't called. John Shotter calling out a play as his players look over towards him. Still in the horn set. Two up top, two in the corner. Shot clock at five. At two. Roach has to force it up, hit the rim, but it's Carolina ball. Great challenge by Leaky Black as a help defender. Love. Great anticipation by Roach on the steal. They battle for it, and the heels come up with it. Well, that was a great opportunity in transition, stifled by North Carolina. Boy, and the seconds keep moving here. Baycott unable to get back into the game. No whistle. Well, if you were looking for a pretty game, this is not it. But it has been pretty. And R.J. Davis has been a difference maker for North Carolina. He's got a game high 17, and that's the eighth lead change of the night. Roach guarded by Love with 10 on the clock. Filipowski again barreling into the chest of Leaky Black. And a foul called on Black. R.J. Davis. And he has got to be exhausted with how hard he has gone. Going up against Eric Lively the second. Pulls up, hesitates, and knocks it in off the glass. A big-time offensive play by R.J. Davis. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. The 260th edition of Duke and Carolina has been much more gritty than pretty. The lead has changed back and forth. They're both playing hard, as you have said often. It doesn't seem to matter what the records are, what they're fighting for. The game always has an unbelievable amount of emotion and intensity. Well, it's always a fist fight. And this game is going to come down to an offensive rebound, a loose ball, a turnover forced because neither team has shot the ball well at all. I give credit to the defenses, but we've seen some open shots missed. But these two teams have been very physical and have fought for everything. Filipowski at the line for Duke, a 77% free throw shooter on the season. He has played 
30 extremely physical minutes tonight. And the numbers bear that out. He's now up to 17 points and 12 rebounds. And make it 18. And with Baycott back into the game, I think North Carolina has to take advantage of that. They're going to start him on the wing. Then he gets a little slice cut to get him down into the low post. But he's drawing a lot of attention. Filipowski right there. He's playing way off Leaky Black. Black blocked by Lively. Got it back. Shot clock at seven. Davis tries to split the double. Black forces it up. And it's a shot clock violation on the Tar Heels. And give credit to Derek Lively the second because he wiped away that scoring opportunity for North Carolina. Just his presence around the rim. Filipowski was shading toward Armando Baycott. And that left Leaky Black wide open. He decided to drive it, and Derek Lively denied it. His third block of the night. He's only played 13 minutes because of foul trouble. Another great game coming your way at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific tonight from Pauley. It'll be Arizona and UCLA. Roach into traffic, kicks it out. And because of that drop coverage, he's running right into Armando Baycott in the middle of the lane. Proctor into the paint. Too strong, tipped, and gathered by Nance. But Carolina has really protected the paint effectively. Davis open. And way too strong, and yet another rebound for Filipowski. And because of all the minutes that North Carolina's usual starters have had to play, you wonder if their legs are an issue on some of these shots. Especially for R.J. Davis, he's had to, he's probably run six miles in this game. He's barely come out of the game. Leaky Black has not come out of the game. Roach and Mitchell both play very heavy minutes for Duke. Filipowski up, no good. And again, Carolina can retake the lead. Baycott got a piece of it and forced Filipowski to adjust that shot while in the air. Love to Baycott. Needs some help and finds Davis. Back to Baycott, and he's fouled. On the drive, Baycott just gets to the front of the rim. And a good find by R.J. Davis. And the seventh team foul on Duke, so one and one coming for Armando Baycott. Well, Dan, anytime there's a drive, really good big guys, and Armando Baycott is that. They get to the front of the rim and present themselves. He got past Filipowski. Filipowski had to foul him, otherwise it would have been a bucket. Baycott now eight for nine from the line in this game. And where would North Carolina be in this game without the free throw line? So Armando Baycott's father. What a night, what a season, and on his senior night, what a career Armando Baycott has had here in Chapel Hill. Carolina can be aggressive. They've only got 14 fouls. You don't want to give them away. Filipowski fouled by Nance, who can't believe it. Filipowski just got that angle on Pete Nance, who's ninth in the ACC in block shots. But that angle was enough. Got caught on the high side. And just that little shot fake jab and allowed him to get his shoulders just past Pete Nance. Well, he's got a remarkable ability to do that, too, especially as a seven-footer. Strong enough, big enough, and agile enough to create those kinds of situations. Well, if he takes that short jumper, that is not all bad news for Pete Nance defensively. We've given up a contested two rather than giving up something at the rim. Duke back on top. 11th lead change in the game. Eight of them have come here in the second half. Inside a minute and a half to go in a regulation. Love in the corner out to Davis. They play on. Black. 
It won't go. Tip, no. And it's Duke Ball. Well, Leaky Black seemed surprised by how, by how open he was for that short little jumper off the glass. Now Duke doesn't have to be in a hurry. Just over a minute to go. Duke with the ball in a one-point lead. Roach splits the defense and lays it in. Boy, that high ball screen gave Jeremy Roach a lot of space to play with. And as you said, he just split those two defenders and got all the way to the rim. And Jeremy Roach has had a tough night shooting the ball, but made the big play when it was required to give Duke a three-point lead. But running it that high, and then he got to that left hand, he just went right in between Leaky Black and Armando Baycott to get it up off the glass. Well, anytime there's a screen set, you have to force the ball handler to use the screen. He was able to refuse that, and that gave him a ton of space in the middle. Uh, how high it was set was really important in that play. Big picture for Carolina. Again, the importance of the game. They're on the bubble. Right side, wrong side. Who knows? They need a quality win. If they don't win this one tonight, they got to do a lot of damage in Greensboro. This next 43 seconds, huge for the Heels. Yeah, and I don't think North Carolina's thinking about next week of the NCAA tournament. They're thinking about winning this game. Yeah. And right now, with just under 44 seconds left in regulation, with a three-point deficit. It's not about getting a three. It's about getting a relatively quick score. I mean, you don't have to get it in 13 seconds, but you have to get a relatively quick score and then get it down to a get it down to a one-point game at least. If you get an open three, that's fine. But you got you got to get something going to the basket here and draw help and then play out of it. And we'll see what Hubert Davis and his staff diagram for his team and right now for Duke's defense it's about RJ Davis and Armando Baycott you give help off of leaky black and then recover late to him and you certainly have to be aware of Pete Nance in any sort of pick and pop situation but how many times over the course of his career have we seen Caleb Love make a, a challenge shot in this type of situation Carolina shooting just 31% on the night and just 5 of 22, 23% from three-point range. And as Jay said again, they do not need a three right now. They need a good look, a well-run possession right now. And for Duke defensively, you have to stay down on every shot fake. Elevator play. Davis in the corner, back to Black, 12 to shoot. Black drives, cut off by Filipowski. Finds Davis. Davis into the chest of Lively. And it's down to Mitchell. And a foul going against the heels. It'll be Baycott. And the presence of Derek Lively, the second. R.J. Davis went right into his chest. Wasn't able to get the call or the score. And then the loose ball comes up with a foul on Armando Baycott. But that doesn't put Duke in the line. That on the line, that's just the sixth team foul. So North Carolina has to look for a steal right, right here. If not, a quick foul. Buff Johnson in for Pete Nance. And you have time to get a quick trap as well. Mitchell to inbound into Filipowski, who's immediately fouled. Filipowski is 77% free throw shooter and seven for seven tonight. Well, there's going to be some training room time after this one. This has been a physical fist fight. Yeah, but after buzzer. Yep. I mean, can't speak for for anybody really, but boy, it feels like the kind of game that Filipowski likes. He seeks out contact. And he has been at the top of his game for the moment this game began. One and one for the freshman. Left it short. 
Shot clock turned off. 15 seconds to go. Down by three. Love. Doesn't get it. Lively the rebound. Ahead to Filipowski. And he will lay it in to ice it for the Blue Devils. Up five with just 2.2 seconds to go. And this game was won by Duke on defense and on the glass. And Carolina does not get that win that they were desperately seeking. Duke comes in here and picks up a big road win, sweeps the regular season series from the Tar Heels. They earn a double bye in the ACC tournament. And what a, a strong performance by the freshman of Duke, notably Philip.